Kevin Johnson, the mayor of Sacramento, former NBA great, joining us on the program again. KJ, or Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> do I have to call you Mr. Mayor? Dan, as a politician, <laughs> I, I answer to just about anything. <laughs> well, probably some other things that you didn't expect to answer to. All right, I'll, I'll do it. I'll keep it formal here. So, Mr. Mayor, where are we today with Sacramento keeping the Kings? I think we're on the eve of one of the most important decisions in the history of Sacramento. Um, you have a city that's holding its breath, who thinks that we've done everything possible, and tomorrow the full board of governors meet in Dallas to hopefully make a, a final decision where Sacramento uh, prevails. Last time you spoke to the Maloofs. Uh, believe it or not, I communicate to George on a semi-regular basis and uh, have a good relationship with them. I mean, I've told them all along that I realize their bottom line is they want to run a business and sell it and have it be a profitable transaction. And I want to make sure that no matter what transpires on that end, that we keep the team in Sacramento, and that would be a win-win. Does Sacramento, I mean, is Sacramento ready to embrace the Kings and hold on to the Kings and, and, you know, that we don't go through this again in two years, three years, five years? I think absolutely, Dan. And I think one of the things that has put us in the driver's seat is I really do believe that we have home court advantage. And why is that? Sacramento's done its part. We've been a model market for 28 years. We've had, you know, out of 28 seasons, we've sold out 19 times. We're a top 20 TV market. The NBA has 100% market share. When you put Seattle side by side with Sacramento in a 23-year period where we both overlap, Sacramento's outdrawn Seattle. So I don't think there's any doubt that this is a proven market. It's been a great partner for the NBA. We've had a love affair with the NBA for 28 years. Yeah, I would hate to see Sacramento lose this just because Seattle paid more money. I, I don't like the fact there's not an NBA team in Seattle, but I don't want Sacramento to pay the price. Here's the key. Uh, speaking of paying the price, is there an investor who will keep the team in Sacramento? Absolutely. If you remember, you know, January 9th so of this year, we first found out the team was for sale at 525, and we knew, uh, you know, what the price was, which was at 525. I got a group of people, both Sacramento locals and people <laughs> that are big equity investors, that matched the price at 525. And we were told at that point it would not be a bidding war. Bidding war. Seattle put their offer in at 525. The Maloof had a, an ability to accept a backup offer. We matched that at 525. We have money and dollars and a big city investment of $258 million to build a brand new arena downtown. Those were the things that were, were asked of us as a city, and we stepped up each and every time along the way. But then you had this 11th hour where the hedge fund guy, Chris Hansen, ponies up 625. Um, he, didn't, he didn't have his best offer up front. Is that going to hurt? Uh, I mean, if you're the Maloofs and you're looking for the most money, now you got more money in Seattle. So how does the NBA respond to that? You know, all I can say is that we've been very respectful of the NBA process. And the process that was laid out to us was if you match the offer at 525, if you can show and demonstrate that you can build a brand new arena downtown, you have the public-private partnership lined up, and that your market will continue to support the Kings like we have done for 28 years, then there's nothing else that we can do as a city. So some of those decisions are going to be outside of our control. I do believe at the end of the day, the onus was on a city to make sure that we did our part. It would be unprecedented in the history of the NBA if you move a team from one city to another when a community has done everything that was asked of it. He's the mayor of Sacramento, Kevin Johnson, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. But if you're, you're looking at this, this vote that comes up tomorrow, uh, what happens if the vote doesn't go in your favor? You know, Dan, you, you played sports, and there's very few shots. You know, I've never st stood at the free throw line with a chance to sink two and say, what happens if I only make one out of the two? Um, we've been fighting this for quite some time. This has been a saga. I think everyone is ready for this to be the final act. And I, I, I literally don't think it's going to go against us. The relocation committee on April 29th or April 30th, they voted 7-0 to keep the team in Sacramento. But, yeah, as the mayor, though, KJ, you have to think – of a backup plan. I mean, that's what happens with a mayor. As a basketball player, you must always think positive. As a mayor, you go, okay, now what? Uh, you have to have a plan B if, if they vote against you. Well, again, I think everything that's been indicated to us from the NBA uh, 
Board of Governors, as it relates to the subcommittee on the relocation committee, they voted 7-0 to keep the team in Sacramento. So typically, the rest of the board goes along with that. So I think we're going to sit there on, on Dallas, present our best case on Wednesday, hear what they ultimately say. And one of the things I would say to the owners, I would say, look, Seattle is a great market. It's a great basketball town. They have great fans. It's a very strong ownership group. I hope they do get a team someday. I believe they deserve a team, just not our team. And Sacramento has proved over and over and time again, in the best of times and in the worst of times, we are a great market for the NBA. We epitomize what a one-team market should be, could be, and is. Last time I said if you dunked, you could keep the, you could keep the Kings in Sacramento, and you said there's no chance in that. If I say you know, 10 out of 10 from the free throw line? Keep going. Can you do that? I can do that. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll definitely take that wager. <laughs> <laughs> how about the how about the mayor of of Seattle against you in a, a game of horse? He's got no. Or shot. no, a game of kings. We just you know, we spell out the letter kings, and then whoever wins gets the kings. He's got no shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, while I have you, I got Clay Thompson coming up top of the hour. Mark Jackson uh, said that he thinks he's got the greatest shooting backcourt in NBA history. With Steph and, and Clay, your thoughts on that comment? What I love about that, he made a bold statement, and then he said, call my bluff, and those guys went out and delivered. <laughs> I saw Clay Thompson play in high school. So in Sacramento, the high school I graduated from, he played uh, against them in the state championship and, and obliterated our team. I was like, holy moly. <laughs> and then he went to Washington State, which was a little surprising because I thought he would go to you know, a bigger college that had you know, a little bit more notoriety. That didn't work out. And then he gets drafted you know, a little bit lower than I thought he would be. And Sacramento had a chance to draft him. Um, you know, in the first round. And he's a tremendous player. And, and Steph Curry speaks for himself. I played with Dale Curry in Cleveland, you know, back in the beginning of my career. So I remember when he was a little toddler, and they're both amazing players. But best shooting backcourt in NBA history? I think, again, time will tell. Right now, they, they ter- certainly are in the running. If they somehow win this series and get by San Antonio and continue to perform at a very high level this year and can continue to sustain that, time is what tells if those things pan out. But, but right who now, would you have, though, right now? Let's take those two guys, two kids out of it. Best shooting backcourt of all time is who? I can only go in my era because, you know, back in the day when you had Jerry West and, and some of those great players, uh, I'm not as familiar, so I can only comment on my on my era. And when I think about two guys that can shoot at that level, I remember Joe Dumars and Isaiah Thomas were fun to watch. They weren't necessarily great shooters at that level, but they were great scorers and, and made clutch shots. But these two guys rival anybody since 1988 moving forward. Well, isn't it anybody who played with Michael Jordan is going to – like it's a pretty good shooting backcourt? Yeah, that that that's one way of looking at it. That's a handicap. That's one way of looking at it. I mean, you take Steve Kerr. I mean, come on, you know, a great player. But I, I'd be a great shooter standing next to Michael Jordan. Wow. I, think you were, I think you were talking about people <laughs> in their own right. <laughs> standing on their own. Oh, man. Well, you got to see Jordan firsthand in that uh, 93 NBA Finals. And I still haven't recovered from that. Thanks for bringing that up, Dan. Did he ever talk trash to you? <laughs> of course he did. <laughs> well, why, what would he say? To, you're a nice guy on the floor. I remember in, we we lose the first two games in the finals in 93 at home. Game three, we're going to Chicago, and I was guarding B.J. Armstrong in the first two games. Paul Westfall makes a defensive adjustment, and he puts <laughs> me on Jordan in game three. And I and I was standing next to Jordan right before the jump ball. He looked at me and go, are you guarding me? I thought you guys were trying to win this series. <laughs> Enough said. Hey, uh, good luck the next 48 hours. We appreciate it, KJ. All right. Thanks, Dan. All right. That's the mayor, Kevin Johnson. I went to a Yale basketball game, and I sat down, and all of a sudden, like, I don't know, four feet away from me is Kevin Johnson. I said, what are you doing? He goes, I I don't know. My brother's looking at Yale and uh, just came in with him. I go, okay. Now, you know, there's like 58 people in the building watching a Yale basketball game, but – He's always been a, one of my favorites. Always liked him. And uh, I remember Phoenix loses at home and then, you know, somehow extended that series to, what, six games? Paxson hits the big shot. But KJ was, he was a 2010 guy. That was an exciting guy.